Namaste, yogis. Thank you for joining me. And today I would like to share with you a short yang practice. We're going to do a yang flow where we use upper body weight bearing exercise and mindful Tai Chi arm movements. This helps to strengthen our cardiopulmonary tract, the heart and the lungs. I'll also share with you a few breathing technique to help to energize the heart chakra, which is the chakra in the chest cavity that will help to keep our lungs and our hearts healthy. And a couple of yin poses that will strengthen the chi and the life force. And also the yin practice is slow, it's deep, we totally relax and melt into the shapes. The yang practice is a soft flow, a flowing sequence that you adapt to your own body. So only do as much or as little as you can at any time, if you feel it's intense, then back out. Listen to your body. Only you knows ultimately what is best for you. Right, so let's start by standing. As we come up, standing on the mat. Just finding your ground here. So, rooting down for your feet. Slightly push your feet outwards. Exhale. Going down, pushing outwards, inhale, come up, exhale, pushing the legs outwards as you bend the knees, going down, and inhale, come up. And now straighten the legs, bringing your awareness to your feet. Really root down through the legs here. Let's find our ground, connect to the ground of your temple. Your body is the temple. So dedicate now as you stand here proud with your feet rooting down, you lift your breastbone, your crown lift up into the heavens, you can roll your shoulders back. Dedicate this time now here to yourself, an opportunity for you to strengthen, balance and heal your body. So rooting down, imagine out of the soles of your feet grow roots, you anchor yourself to the earth. You feel that deep connection. Feel the heartbeat of the earth, draw it up into your legs, into your heart. Feel how your heart beat in harmony with the rhythm of Mother Earth's heart. So you're standing tall, the collarbones roll back, the breastbones lift. You've got equal weight on all corners of your feet. The big toes are active, the little toes are active. The heels root down and the balls of the feet push into the earth. Now we're going to do a balance. So turn your right foot out and then take the foot up wherever is right for you. So on the ankle bone below the knee or you can lift it all the way up into the root of your thigh. Bring your palms to your heart. Inhale, reach up. Stretching up, reach for the sky. So find your ground. You're strong, you're rooting down. You lift your pelvic floor to give you a secure lock here. Just drawing the belly button inwards. So your foot doesn't have to be in the root of your thigh. If it's here, if it's on below the knee or on the ankle, the purpose of the balance is to strengthen the core. Especially here, we're working through the iliacus, the psoas muscle, and strengthening the leg of the standing leg. Right? So you can bring your arms down by your side, to, to your heart. Take your arms wide and then bring your palms together, bend the elbows, release the right foot, take it forwards, bend your standing leg and intertwine the legs. If you can, you hook the foot behind the standing calf, so make sure that knee is bent. So we have the right leg on top, now bring your left elbow on top of your right if you can. And then you can bring the top of your hands together or you can go further and intertwine your arms for the ego, Garudasana. So strengthening here, we're working strongly on the ankle, the foot, and the leg of the left, and the left side, and then slowly uncoil and release. Reach your arms up, release your foot, lift and stretch, and bring the palms together, and slowly lower the hands back down to your heart. Now let's do the other side. Turn the left foot out. You can have a little bounce here on this knee just to root the foot back into the earth. Straighten the leg, lift the belly button to the spine 
And now take the foot up, wherever's right for you. On the ankle, below the knee, or in the root of the thigh. Inhale, reach up. Lift the breastbone. Lift the fingertips to the sky. The balancing postures help to strengthen the vestibular part of the brain. And it strengthens bone mass over the arms. Bring the arms together. Palms together, bend the elbows. You can take your right elbow now on top of your left if you can. Bring the top of your hands together or if you can go further, intertwine the arms. Bring the palms together. Release the foot, take it forwards. Bend your standing leg and then as you cross the left over right, intertwine the legs. Lift the fingertips, feel that nice stretch down the arms into the deltoid muscles. Good, and release. Okay, step your feet a little bit apart. We're going to do some breathing exercises now to energize the heart and the lungs. So bring your hands onto your, onto your shoulders. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, we're going to turn to the right. So let's do a few of those, just turning to the right as you exhale. <sighs> Inhale to center. You can, you know, release some sound on the exhalation that help to release if there are any excess, any charge in this energy center. Ha! 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 Good, that was five. Now we'll five to the other side. Inhale and turn to the left. Ha! 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 Good, and release. Lower the arms, roll your shoulders back, lift the breastbone, and just check in. Feeling into this part of the body, feeling into your heart, feeling into your feet and your legs. Just observe and notice what is here right now. Can you feel that life force inside of here? We've done twisting with this, which helped to also rotate the, the um, thoracic spine. Right, and now we're going to do the breath of joy. So with that, we're going to take the three parts to the inhalation. The first part, you inhale, lift the arms parallel. The second part, you take the arms out sideways. And the third part, you reach up and then you Exhale and you fold all the way forwards. Ha! So you inhale, arms parallel, arms to the side, inhale, inhale, deeper three parts to the inhalation, and then exhale. Ha! Inhale, 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 ha! Inhale, 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 ha! Inhale, 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 ha! Bend your knees as you fold forwards. Ha! Ha! And once more. Inhale, inhale, and down. Ha! Good. Coming up and just standing, roll your collarbones back. Observe here how you feel. Feeling into your heart. Can you feel that burst of energy and life force kicking in and the lungs and the heart center here and also in the arms. Okay, and now something that you know, you, when at any time when you feel you're a little bit stressed and overwhelmed, just to shake, just start to shake. You can time yourself. You can do this for two to three minutes. Just shaking, 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 shaking. You can shake your arms and you can shake your legs. You can shake it up and you can shake it down and you can shake your dragon tail. <laughs> All right, you can do this while you sit on a chair. You can shake while you sit on a chair or you can do this while you lay down. So, if you would like to join me, you can lay down now, and then we can continue shaking. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake the arms, shake the legs. So I say the shaking help to release any tension in the nervous system. Have you ever seen in the wild? If zebra escaped the cheetah attack, it will walk away, shake it all out, and then continue on grazing. Right, just shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, and now relax. 
Just observe how you feel. Noticing what is here. How do you feel? Can you feel that life force? The tingling, the streaming, that's streaming up and down your arms and your legs. The shaking create vibrations. And as we lay down, you can literally feel. So the starting from the extremities, toes and the fingers, it flows through the wrist, to the elbows, the shoulders, moving into your heart. And then from the toes, to the ankles, to the knees, streaming up the thighs, to the hips, and from there into the belly and the chest center. Okay, so while we're down, let's do our first yin pose. So I think for today, we can do banana. As you lay down, take your hands over your head, have a long stretch, spread your fingers. You can push into your heels here, lift your hips off the floor, and then shift your bum over to the right side as far as you can. Take your right foot to your left foot and bring your arms and your shoulders also up and over here as far as you can towards the left. So now we stretch through the right side of the body. We stretch all along the right. So your bum and your shoulders both stay to the floor. Feel that lovely opening in the armpit. So if you have a problem with the shoulder, use support. You can use a bolster and just put it under that shoulder. Sometimes if the arm is not on the floor, you know, make it comfortable for yourself. Put the arm on a bolster or a pillow, a cushion, and then just relax into it. So we're going to hold the shape for three minutes. So it is important to remember when we do the yin practice, we relax the muscle tissue. We work beyond the superficial muscle tissue now into the tendons and the ligaments of the body. The yin tissue. We're setting the timer for three minutes. And there we go. So soften and melt. Think of your body as an ice cube. You're dissolving into the earth. You're laying in the sunshine and you're just spreading. Allow yourself to let go. Just softening and melting. Feel then what is happening here for you. Can you feel that lovely lengthening down the waist, through the ribcage, in the side? As you breathe, feel how your rib bones expand. Feel that nice stress in the intercostal muscles. Feel how they expand with every inhalation and how they contract with every exhalation. Slow, long, delicious inhalation. With every exhalation, you're letting go a little, little bit deeper into the shape. Follow your breath, the in and the out of the breath. So when we start to pay attention to our, the feelings in the body, we also start to notice the breathing. And this is all the first foundation of mindfulness, to connecting with the body and the breath brings us into the present moment. So the past is a memory. The future is a mystery. To be in this moment is a gift. So observe your breath, the in and the out, the coming and the going. Feel the opening in your heart. Feel how as you inhale, there is a sense of you breathing in peace. And as you exhale, there is a feeling of grounding, melting, softening, letting go. So you're in banana and I'm doing the mermaid. It's very similar stretch. I'm still stretching laterally from on my right side here. So notice how you stretch the inside of your hip bone in the iliacus muscle, which joined the psoas, all here on the right side. Releasing the flight tension in the flight or fight muscle. 
just breathing and melting in and out. Quiet, even rhythm of your breath. Two more deep breaths. Ideally, the yoga breath should be about um, four to six breaths per minute. Inhale for five. We pause for hold the breath. And then we slowly exhale. Good. That's the timer. So you can slowly come up. Just come back to center. Laying down. And just pause here. Feel what is happening for you in your body. Feeling into the sensations. Can you feel how different the right side of the body now feels to the left side? And notice if there's any sensations. Maybe the right leg feels longer. Maybe that hip feels lower. Observe the difference. So after the, the yin postures, we often pause and we call that the rebounds. And that is the time when we check in. This is like a reward for your practice. It's like a mini savasana in and between. It teaches us the art of letting go. Okay, so when you're ready, we're going to do the other side. So again, you can take the arms over your head. You can have a long stretch. Pushing into both heels. Lift your bum off the floor. And then shift it as far as you can to the left side. Walk your feet and your arms over to the right. As far as you can. Remember the bum and the shoulders both... The hip bones and shoulder blades stay to the floor. And we back into banana asana. So we're going to hold this again for three minutes. Soften and melt. We reach beyond the muscle tissue. Deep down, close to the core. We're stretching through all the lateral ligaments of the spinal column here. We're working on the tendons and ligaments, on lining the inside of the rib bones, the spare of meat muscles, tendons, and the inside of the hip bone. So just breathing. Again, notice the expansion of the rib bones, opening out and the contraction. Lovely intercostal stretches. The banana will help us to maintain a flexible rib cage. When you have a flexible rib cage, you can breathe to your full capacity. We breathe shallow, the rib cage becomes crippled, the intercostals lose its flexibility, and then it restricts the chest, and that creates you know, a, a limit compression on the cardiopulmonary system. The lungs can't expand to its full capacity. Your organs get an internal exercise every time when you take a deep belly breath. The organs hang from the diaphragm with every inhalation. The organs turn and twist and rotate. Helps to heal, cleanse, detox and purify the organs. The breath is the life force. Take a deep breath in. Breathe in gratitude for your breath. Breathe in gratitude for the trees. It gives us oxygen. In ancient societies, is what said, once you reach the point where you're grateful for your breath, you become the true alchemist of your life. The oxygen is for free. Take in plenty. Have a little pause here. Allow the oxygen to deliver into every cell of your being. And then slowly exhale. Empty your lungs completely. So we're not just muscle and bone. If you really pay attention here, you can feel how what a lovely deep organic stretch this is. You know, under this the left um, diaphragm is the stomach, then the spleen, the pancreas, and then from there also go down the descending large intestine. Feel that lovely opening. Banana is a lateral stretch, our spine has six ranges of movement. 
And for us to maintain a healthy back and a strong back, we need to make use of the full range of motions of our spinal column every day. And slowly come out. Laying down, slowly shift. So transitions in and out of the shapes is slow. You do it at your own pace. There's no rush. So come back onto your mat. And then again, if you pause, you can feel the rebound here. Feel the tingling, the streaming, the difference between left and right. Okay, so... I would like us to do a quadricep stretch. So some of you doing yoga with me can do the cat's tail and the others if you want for today. We can just stretch the quad. It's not about going backwards. It's about lengthening the front of the body. If we do a lot of sitting, the hip flexors get very tight. These muscles get short and the hamstring lengthen, but weaken. So to maintain a healthy back, we need to, as I said, go backwards and go forwards. We can do sideways and twist. So for today, we're just going to stretch the quad. So if you bend your right leg, or, uh, right leg back, and then go back here as far as you can. So you have an option. If you can go back further, you can come onto your elbows. You can also walk your arms back. You can lean against a sofa here or a chair. You can have a bolster behind you if you wish. If you can, go further back to lean on the bolster. This will give you a lovely opening in the heart. You can bring your arms in line with your shoulders if you can go further back. But I repeat, it's not about going back. It's about stretching your quadriceps. So we're going to hold this for, let's hold it for two minutes, shall we? Just a soft lengthening for the quadriceps muscle and opening for the hip flexor. Especially if you do a lot of sitting, this is a very important stretch. Lengthening the front layer of the body also helps you open the heart. So down here, if, if you can go all the way back to make the stretch slightly stronger for you on your quad, then you can also bend the straight leg and you can also engage the arms. Take the arms over your head will make the stretch on this thigh for you much stronger. But just work at your own ability. If you go back and your knees start to lift off, then come up. If this is enough for you for today, then this is where you stay. Your knee go back, you can cause a lot of strain here on the ankle. Then you start to take the stretch through the lower leg and, you know, strength, uh, causing strain in the ankle is unnecessary. It's not, as long as you feel it in your quads, you're in a safe place. Especially for cyclists, this is a great stretch to, you know, release that and lengthen the quadriceps muscles. So just breathing. As we stretch through the um, front of the thighs, it helps us to stimulate our stomach and spleen meridians. So spleen is the body's defense mechanism. The spleen meridian runs through the inside of your thigh. So by playing around with your foot position, if you flex your foot out to the side, it's going to give you more of an inward rotation of your femur and that will stretch the inside of the thigh. If you point it back, it will give you more of a stretch on the, maybe the outside, does that roll the femur out? But we're all different, we all have different hip formations. Some of us, our hips rotate in and the others rotate out. And this is for you to explore what works best for you. Okay, so now we can do the other side. So release the foot and then change legs. So bringing the left leg back. And again, slowly go back as far as you can. You know, one side of your body might feel very different. We're all asymmetrical. So just go as far as, as what is comfortable and doable. If at any time you experience an overwhelming, excruciating pain, then you back out. You come up, you play your edges. 
this, this is your edge for today, then this is great. Nobody's watching. Only you know what's ultimately best for your friend. Go on, sit onto the elbows, play around to your foot position, exploring what works best for you, till you're ready for the others if you want to go all the way back. And then you can also take the arms over your head or bend the straight leg. And soften and melt, letting go. So utilize your breath to calm your mind and to open and surrender into the body. It's a lovely opening and lengthening. All the quadriceps, the tendons and ligaments of these big chunky muscles. It's three quads. So breathing and melting. Excessive thinking and worry weakens the spleen meridian. And that is also the negative attribute from the stomach meridian. Excessive thinking. So just melting and softening. Letting go into the shape. Only two minutes. So one more deep breath here. And for now, to come out of the shape, roll away from the bent leg. Just release the straight leg, laying on your back. And just feel, observe what is here. How does it feel now? Can you feel the opening here in the front, in the pelvic area? We move forward from our pelvis. And as we do a lot of sitting, things can get very tight in there. And then moving forwards becomes difficult at times. So these gentle, long, slow, yet practice stretches will help to to help you to regain the freedom in your joints. So the yin stretches the tendons and the ligaments, and the yang practice helps us to strengthen the muscles, activate the life force and the chi through the meridians. So we release, we've done two stretches now, so we're going to, let's do the stirrups before we come up. A symmetrical yin pose, that was two asymmetrical stretches. So now, bend your knees onto your chest. Hug your knees into your chest. This is the folded pose. This is a great stretch to do, as I always say to my students in the mornings before you jump out of bed. It's up to release the lumbar thoracic fascia in the back. Stretch the tendons of the hamstrings. So you can either stay here for another two minutes, or you can come into the stirrups if you wish. With the stirrups, you bring your elbows on the inside of your knees, you bring your soles of your feet parallel to the ceiling, and then you hold on to the outside of your feet, you hold on onto the ankles, or you can wrap your hands behind your knees, and then take your knees as wide as you can, so you really get a strong stretch here through the inner thighs. You bring your knees as close to your armpits as you can, and you take your feet wide. Then you can play around with your, your pelvic tailbone position. You can tilt it up to give you more of a back stretch maybe. Or you can roll it down, which will give you more of an inner thigh stretch and a stronger compression here through the front of the thighs. So let's hold this for two minutes, either folded pose or the two minutes or the uh, stirrups, symmetrical stretch. Lovely back stretch, both of them working from the coccyx up into the lumbar spine. Open the knees wide. Get that inner thigh stretch. It stimulates our liver meridians, kidney meridians run through the back of the legs. Working on the tendons of the hamstrings here in the coccyx area. 
As you open your legs wide, it will help to create space in that sacroiliac joint. Bringing some fresh synovial fluid in there. can be challenging to let go in the shapes. We're so conditioned that exercise is only about sweating and holding muscles tight, but it's not really. If you want to stretch your tendons in your ligaments, you have to soften, because your muscle's job is to protect the joints. They soften the muscles, help you to reach into the tendons and ligaments. They like plastic tissue in the body. Our muscles are the elastic tissue. The softening, and relaxing into every shape. Okay, time to release. And just laying down, let it go. Just checking in, feeling the sensations, tingling, streaming. What is happening for you in your lower back, at the back of your legs? And as you release after hugging the knees so close to your chest here for two minutes, it was actually a bit longer, can you feel how that increased the circulation through the legs into the pelvic area? Good, hug your knees onto your chest. And now you can hold on behind the knees and rock forwards and back on your spine. Or you can roll to the right side and then we can come up for a short yang practice if you want to join us. Okay. So today I would like to share with you the, I think we should do the dragon flight. This brings weight onto the upper body and it's Activate the life force through the lungs and the heart meridians. Lungs run through the thumb, heart meridian runs through the little finger, the inside of the arms. So starting standing at the front of your mat, only do as much or as little as you can. So we're going to start rooting down. Found here the foundation of your temple. Let your roots shoot deep down into the earth. Drawing up from the earth with your right leg, Take the leg back and bring it parallel to the floor. Take the arms, to your palms together. You can bring the hands to your heart. You can straighten and extend that back leg. If you find this challenging, you can also bring the back toes to the floor. This is a strong balance. You can take the arms wide. You can flap your wings as dragon take flight. And you can reach forwards and back. Find your ground with your back foot. Bring your hands to the inside of your front leg. Let's do three push-ups here in the gecko. So you bend your elbows. You listen to the earth with your left ear. Straighten the arms. Exhale, bend. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bend. Inhale, lift. And now you're going to twist towards your knee. So raise your left arm up. And then lower the hand. Bring it down to the floor. Press into both hands, retract your front leg, swing your tail up to the sky. And here you can play around with your tail, you know, explore, maybe make three big circles with this knee. So you push the floor away with your hands. And then swing your leg forwards, lower your back heel down. So now bring your right arm up like a big one stroke rainbow. Fly to the other side of the world, left arm up. Turning and rotating on your toes and your heels. Swing both arms back, show your dragon wings and lift your heart. Exhale, rebound, bring your hands down to the floor. Press into your both hands. Retract your front tail, your right foot, swing it up to the sky. And again, you can explore and play around here with your knee. Checking your tail out, what can you do with it? And then first group, 
bring your knee to the floor. Second group, you can thread the needle through the hole and step the foot out to the side. And then raise, everybody raise your left arm up, show your belly. So here for first group, we're over there. Second group, retract. Swing your tail up to the sky. Take a big step forwards. Lift your back leg off the floor and again, drag and take flight. Flap your wings, find your balance. Inhale, come all the way up, drawing up from the earth and the stalk and then again, go back, take flight. Flap your wings. Reaching forwards, find your ground, bring your hands to the inside of your front leg and bend the elbows for gecko. Three geckos, one, two, and three. And now you're going to twist towards your knee to raise your right arm up, turning towards your right leg. Lower your hand, press into both hands, drag your front tail, swing it up to the sky. And again, explore your tail with your tail. Make three big circles. Imagine there's a pencil in your kneecap. And then swing your leg forwards. Step between your hands. If you can't, step halfway. Grab the foot. Lower the back heel down to the floor. Inhale, come up with your left arm up. Big rainbow. As you fly to the other side of the world, right arm up. Swing both arms back. And feel your wings, lift your heart. Exhale, rebound, bring your hands down to the floor. Press into both hands, retract your front end, swing it up to the sky. And again, explore, play around with your tail. Maybe make three big circles. And now, first group, you bring your knee to the floor, you raise your right arm up, and second group, you thread the needle through the hole. You pivot and tilt on your toes and you reach up. Slowly retract. Swing your tail up to the sky. Take a big step forwards. Lift the back leg off. And again, take flight. Flap your wings. And then slowly come up. Lift that knee up. Back into the stalk. Lower the leg. And Come back down into your squat. So take your legs hip width apart. Create a figure of eight here with your pelvis. Good, and now come up to all fours. Walk your hands forwards. Coming up to all fours. Tilt your tailbone up to the sky, looking up. And as you exhale, round your back. Lift your shoulders up, so creating a forward bend here. Back as you inhale, you drop your belly to the floor, creating a back bend. Exhale, bow. Inhale, looking up. Exhale, bow. Inhale, looking up. And up from here, create more freedom and movement as you come into the bear. So have a little roll from side to side. Tucking the tailbone up and down. And now thread the needle through the hole. Bring your right arm to the floor. So bringing the right arm to the floor. If you feel stable here on your arm, if you find it's hard to get the arm to the floor, get your bolster support and have it under your shoulder and under your neck, right? And then side kick if you feel you can. Side kick your kickstand tripod leg out. And then we can start to make a mindful movement with the left arm. So you lift the arm up, you glide through space. Slow motion, mindful movement. You glide through space here. You can roll into the neck as deep as you can as what's comfortable and doable. Slow motion, feel the air gliding through your fingers. If you slow the movement down, it becomes more mindful. Gliding through space. Make a big clockwise circle and then you can go anti-clockwise. As if you're catching the air with your hand. 
feel it touching the palm of your hand. Rotate the arm. Slow mindful movement. And then bring the hand back to the floor, press into the hand, retract your arm, come back into the bear, rolling from side to side while you tuck your tailbone up and down. And then we're going to do the other side. So when you're ready, thread the needle through the hole. So we bring your left arm to the floor, laying on the left arm. If you need support here under the shoulder, place something there. Stay here. This is a lovely twist for the thoracic cervical spine. If you want to go deeper into it, side kick your kickstand, tripod deck out. And now we're going to create a mindful movement again with the top arm. So you take the right arm up. You slowly guide through space. Feel the air touching your hand. Listen to the sound in the shoulder. Release the point where you started. Then you go anticlockwise, coming all the way back, gliding through space. Good, and slowly come back to center and coil. And then you can come onto all, um, into the child pose, the kneeling forward bent. Just resting on your forehead. If your forehead's not on the floor, you can have your, stack your fists, support your head. It's a lovely deep bend here for your knees and your hips and a sweet back stretch. Okay, good. So we use child here as a recuperating posture after the act of yang flows. But again, if you hold any posture for two to five minutes, it becomes a yin stretch. The posture is not yin or yang, it's the way you do it. If you hold it and you relax into it, and you hold it for two to five minutes or more, not more than 20, it's a yin stretch. If you hold it for with muscles tight and tense for up to a minute, six deep breaths, nine deep breaths, then it's a yang stretch. Okay, so you can come onto your back now and we can relax for Savasana. So release, come up, release your legs and fold back onto your mat. Take your arms and your legs wide. You can use an eye pillow here on the eyes if you wish. And close your eyes. Feeling into your heart, feeling into the sensations in the body. Feel into your overall state of being. And take a few deep, slow breaths. Allow your shoulders to spread across the floor. Allow your eyes to relax into pools of darkness. Quiet, even rhythm of your breath. You've got nothing to do now. You've got nowhere to be, no one to look after. It's time for you to let go. Savasana teaches us the art of letting go. It helps us to become a human being out of the human doing mode into the inner stillness connected to the human being part of us. Let's do a short yoga nidra practice. So yoga nidra means yoga sleep. So set your intention now as you say, I am practicing yoga nidra. That creates an intention, an intention to stay awake that the body is sleeping, but the mind is alert and awake. And th this has enormous benefits on the, the brain and the mind connection. So trust me and let go. Just follow my voice. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to contract any parts of the body. Imagine the, your awareness, wherever the part of the body that I call out, your awareness follow there. Just like the sunshine starting to come out behind the clouds. So 
and taking your awareness to your right thumb. We're starting in the right side of the body. Tip of the right thumb, the tip of the right middle uh, index finger, the tip of the right middle finger, the ring finger, the little finger, the palm of the hand, the wrist, the right elbow, the right shoulder, the whole of the right arm, glowing with the light of awareness. Like the joyful sunlight shining through the whole of your right arm. The right armpit, the right breast, the rib cage, the right hip bone, the thigh, the knee, the calf, the ankle, the heel of the right foot, the sole of the right foot, the big toe, the second toe, the third toe fourth toe and the fifth toe, the top of the right foot, the whole of the right leg, the whole of the right body, glowing with the luminous light of awareness, shining bright. Now bring your awareness to the left side of the body, the tip of the left thumb, tip of the left index, the middle finger, the ring finger, the little finger, palm of the left hand, the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, the whole of the left arm, the armpit, the left breast, the rib cage, the waist, the left hip bone, the left thigh, the knee, the calf, the ankle, the heel of the left foot, the sole of the left foot, the left big toe, the second toe, the third toe, the fourth toe and the fifth toe, the whole of the left foot, the whole of the left leg, the whole of the left leg shining with the luminous light of awareness, the whole of the left body the right leg and the left leg, both legs together, the right arm and the left arm, both arms together, the tailbone, the sacrum, your awareness climb up the five vertebras of the lumbar spine to the twelve vertebras of the thoracic spine, the right shoulder blade, the left shoulder blade, the neck, the seven cervicals of the neck, the back of the head, the crown of your head, the forehead, the right eyebrow, the right eyelid and lashes, the right eye, the right cheekbone, the left eyebrow, the left eyelid and eyelashes, the left eye, the left cheekbone, the bridge of your nose, the top of your nose, the top lip, the bottom lip, the space between the lips, the tongue, the gums, the teeth, the space inside of the mouth, the jaw, the chin, the front of the neck, the throat, soft space between the right and the left collarbone, the breastbone, the upper belly, the lower belly, the pubic bone, the inside of the thighs, the whole of your body luminous with the light of awareness. Your mind is awake and alert. Your body is sleeping. The body is resting mind is alert and all you're aware of now is your breath, breathing the body, the in and the out of the breath. You notice how the breath changes the sensations in the body. Although the body is quiet and sleeping, there is movement in the body. As the breath moves through the body, you feel into the sensations, how the inhalation changes sensations in the back 
and how on the exhalation, the muscles of the back and the belly moves again. You're aware of the in and the out, quiet, even rhythm of your breath. And now repeat to yourself, I am calm and peaceful. I'm calm, peaceful, and healthy. I am calm and peaceful. I am calm, peaceful, and healthy. In your imagination now, take yourself to your favorite place, a place where you would most like to be. The most perfect beach, most beautiful garden, a mountain and lake, wherever you would love to be. And repeat to yourself again, I am calm and peaceful. I am calm, peaceful, and healthy. And then slowly now, you start to walk yourself back to the real world, bringing your awareness back to the body. You're aware of the stillness. You're aware how peaceful and calm you feel and how well you feel. And then you can wiggle your fingers and your toes to get your essence back into your extremities. Take a deep breath and then take the arms over your head. Have a big sigh. Ah, stretch it out. And now hug your knees onto your chest. Rock a few times from side to side. And then roll onto your right side. You roll here and to the right side, stay here and rub the palms of your hands together to create a lot of heat and energy between your hands. We give and receive with our hands. So create this healing energy between your hands that you can now give into your eyes as you cup the hands, place them over your eyes. As you open the, the eyes, feel the heat and the warmth of the hands penetrating into your eyes. Look up, down, up and down, from right to left, from left to right. And then draw the hands away from you, press into your left hand, come up from your right hand side. And now come up sitting. Come sitting with your palms together. Bring your thumbs to forehead here. Just reminding us to stay peaceful and quiet and calm in the mind. Bring your thumbs to your breastbone. Reminding us about the enormous amount of joy, love and compassion that rests in our hearts. And have a last stretch, reminding us to stay grounded and centered, to stay connected and grateful for the support of the earth. And slowly come up. Bring your palms to your heart. Namaste. Bless you all. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to sharing with you again next week. If you're interested, you can still join my 90-minute yin yoga classes on my website, www.yogaorchids.com slash classes. Namaste.